so now in this session we understand uh, osi layer okay in the previous session we had seen uh, the tcp ip protocol suit and in this session let's understand the current uh, you know the system that is using by several applications so this is open system interconnection which is known as osi layer i hope you had you are familiar with this term and you had seen many a times in the in the subject of computer network or advanced computer network or in data communication or in wireless or any other but it also exists and sits in mobile computing so it is necessary to understand you know the very uh, basic on the fundamentals of osi layers so it possesses seven layers so i'm going to list it down so please keep that in mind that application layer resides at the very at the very base i mean it is it is on the seventh you know position so it is not on the first position it is on the seventh position so never start your osi layer with application layer but it is going to be started with physical layer okay so this is the physical layer the second layer is going to be data link layer the third link is going to be network layer the fourth one is going to be transport layer the fifth one is going to be session layer sixth one is going to be presentation layer and the last one is going to be the application layer these are the seven layer which we need to understand precisely and the question that that they going to ask you is they will ask you the functionalities and they will ask you these layers and they will ask you that uh, that where exactly this function functionality will possess so you have to name the layer where this functionality suits up okay so these this is the osi layers and we we will understand the functionalities of each and every layer so i am going to start with the first layer and the first layer is going to be your uh, the physical layer so let me write it down here that the first layer is the physical layer and now understand that physical how why is it you know started with physical layer is because you uh, you you have your devices okay first on hand you are having your devices so we will start with the very basics of the thing from where exactly you know you are propagating your signals so the physical device is actually the first thing that arises whenever we want to deal with data communication or any other kind of exchange of information so this is that is the reason we have physical you know as a physical layer come and exist so the function it possesses so the function it possesses i am going to write it down here so the first function it says that it shows you the physical characteristic the physical characteristic of interference or oh sorry interfaces and mediums interfaces and medium what do you mean by interfaces is nothing but it's something like how many kind how many uh the uh, what do you call the internet connections or the network connection you are having just like wifi just like ethernet like this I, i'm going to write it down so if you are having two uh, interfaces one in terms of wifi and the another in terms of ethernet maybe you are having loop back adapter or maybe you are having virtual machines then there are other interfaces come and exist in your uh the uh what do you call network configurations okay so it shows you the physical characteristic of those interfaces like what type of ip addresses it is having subnet mask the mac address and stuff like that what is the rssi that is the uh, radio signal strength you know indicator and what kind of medium is possessed okay so it is using a guided media or unguided media stuff like that so the first the second the second function that this physical layer possesses it shows you or it it gives you the representation of the bits so representation of bits 
keep that in mind that it is nothing like in uh, nothing like translation or uh, transcoding or stuff like that but in terms of representation it is going to be like a formatting of bits so formatting it means the analog signal converted into digital and digital is converted into analog or maybe uh, digital to digital or maybe analog to digital all these kind of thing can be done on the terms of representation of bits in physical layer so the third property it suggests or it says is the topologies so all kind of topologies come and sit in the physical layer so whenever the question arises or it been asked in the exam that mesh topology or the topology function uh, come and exist in which layer and the four option you, you had given then please choose physical layer and don't choose any other okay so topologies we have we have star we have mesh we have bus and we have ring these are the four academic you know topologies there are many others but remember these four these are the very very basic so that's why you know we remember these four topologies they're actually you know hybrid and other other uh, topologies but you just remember these four so the fourth uh, you know uh, the functionality it says that line configuration now actually i need to put it on the on the third position but that that is okay line configuration it means i told you in my previous session that it is nothing but a kind of connection point to point and the other connection is multi point now based on these line configuration your topologies are depend okay so the topology actually uses point to point and multi point okay so the next thing that this thing or this physical layer is going to be possessed is the data or bit rate so in, in a second how many bits is being sended from sender to the receiver so i'm going to write that data or bit rate okay next thing is going to be the functionality as 1.6 it says that synchronization of bit let me write it down here synchronization synchronization of bits so in the physical layer one bit is been taken for sender and one bit is also taken for the receiver so they need to synchronize and how they can synchronize with this synchronization bits okay so this one bit is going to synchronize both side and whenever they synchronize they can send the data or exchange the information so these are the six functionalities that uh, this particular layer is going to be possessed so please remember that we have physical layer and we have six possible functionalities which you can elongate it in your you know language and can precisely write it down in the exam okay so this is physical layer we can understand the next layer and the next layer is going to be the data link layer okay there is one more thing that if someone asks you that what format uh, the data is there on the physical layer then you please uh, tell them that the bit in the in the form of bit the data is there in the physical layer now if if the same question ask in the data link layer then you tell them that the data from the bits it comes to the data link layer and it is converted in into the frame in the second layer or the layer 2 okay so that data formatted in the form of frame here so the first functionality that data link possess it is it is itself framing so the data that is coming from the physical layer in the form of bits so if this is the bit 10101010 then this is my first frame and this is going to be my second frame in the way so this is my f1 f2 and so on in the way the framing is working okay so this is framing second thing is possess is uh, it is something called as error control now error control it is easy to understand that in 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 a communication between sender to receiver there is a problem of you know noise and other uh, effectful you know obstacles that hinders the good communication and that's why there is a problem of uh, errors and we can precisely resolve with the help of error control but now keep that in mind that error control here in the data link layer error control means it only detect the error it is not going to correct here okay so whenever the question arises here in the error control keep that in mind that it that this layer is going to only detect the error it is not going to or it is never going to correct the error okay so this is the error control 
2.3 says flow control. Now flow control it means let's say you are you are a 4G user, your speed is going to be very high, and the sender or the receiver, the receiver on the side is he is using 2G connection. Now key, now you can see here this is a very go good communication. However, this is having on a very low level of communication. So whenever this 4G user is going to send some data, he will definitely send in a full rate or he is going to send and send and send. He thinks that he this particular data is going to be grabbed by this 2G user. But the problem is 2G user is not having enough bandwidth, enough speed. He cannot grab this full transmission of data. So there is a problem of congestion problem of traffic and many other uh, effectual things happen is going to be happen at the receiver side so we need to we need to control this flow so that receiver can grab the data in the you know amp full time of time amp uh, full time okay so if you you know you just you just put data and data and data so on then receiver is not going to you know hold that data there is a problem of delay and other stuff so we have to we have to generate some flow control mechanism by which we can uh, send few amount of data and then feedback it from the 2G user. So like that. I hope you are getting it. So uh, 2.4 says excess control. Now what do you mean by excess control? Now excess control says see here if this is the channel. Now this channel is completely free. So what will happen that if this is a free channel then every sender is going to come and send their data. Every user is going to come and send its data. Now whenever the uh, user is going to send the data there must be a time that you know in that in that particular instant of time two user using the same thing and send the data. When this thing happens this is going to be you know jammed by or not jammed but this is going to be collide with the other data and there is a problem called as interference happens. So this this problem is known as there is lacking of excess control. What is excess control? That we provide some good excess control to this channel that at a time one user can send the data at a second time second user can send the data at the third time a third user can send the data in that way we are providing the excess control to the user so that efficiently we can use this channel otherwise what will happen everyone is going to come to the channel send their data and the and the particular instant of a time there must there there might be two or three user who are sending the data and collide with each other and there is an interference uh, problem going to be generated and this will lead to distortion or not distortion but it's going to data loss or problem like that um, uh, come to be uh, happen. So these are the four you know uh, thing that is uh, that is there in the data link layer. One more very important thing one more 2.5. 2.5 says uh, let me just change the color here because my board is being completed. Okay 2.5 here 2.4 we have 2.5 and 2.5 says we have another functionalities in terms of physical addressing which is very important keep that in mind here physical addressing now physical addressing we have mac address media access control which is also possessed here physical addressing now in access control you can go and look for these algorithms csma cd i'll tell you about this but this is the algorithm which is you know which are the excess control mechanisms and CA. So it says collision, uh, sorry, carrier sense multiple access, collision detection, carrier sense multiple access, collision avoidance. This particular thing is used on wired connection, and this particular thing is going to be used in wireless connection. Okay. So these are the functions that it provides by the data link layer, and we can understand the next layer. So the next layer is going to be the transport layer you can see here and transport layer actually is having the, the first functionality the transport layer we have something called as service addressing actually uh, it is you know you see here actually I had done it but I'm just giving an overview okay. So we have service addressing here now why this is important you think about it now let's say you are requesting something on the computer okay how your how the question arises is how your computer understand that this service is going to be opened up on the basis of response you are requesting something and the response is response is, response is coming back then how your computer is going to know that yeah this service is, is going to be opened so let's say 
I give you an I give you an IP address 172.16.13 here. You see here, I I had given you this IP address here, right? Then how your computer is going to respond to this request? Because with this IP address, he he doesn't know that what exactly he wants. This IP address is only meant to uh, identify you uniquely on the internet. There is no other meaning of this IP address. But then if you provide something called as colon and some number then your computer is going to understand yeah then this service is, is needed to be opened up so when you provide ad then your computer is precisely know about this that it it needs to open the browser and there is a need of uh, you know surfing or browsing in a very similar way if there is an ip address which shows you that uh, you know dot uh, colon 21 then this 21 gives you an idea to this computer that yeah I need to open file Zilla uh, to make an FTP connection because you see here this IP address is is this is the same IP address. If you don't provide this port address, this port number, then your computer is going to be you know it is going to be uh, behave as an question mark because he doesn't know that which service now he wants to open because your IP is only you know identify you uniquely over the internet. It doesn't give you any other um, thing. But this this colon number this colon number gives you an idea to this computer that yeah this service is meant for this so so I will open this service so it is meant meant for uh, browsing and surfing 21 is used to uh, used to for file transfer then in the same way uh, 25 is used for mail serving and 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 stuff like that okay so the service service addressing is the thing by which you know your your uh, computer is going to understand that yeah this service I needs to open we call it as port address this is the first or the 4.1 function of transport layer the next function we have here I had listed down actually the second function is segmentation and reassembly so you see the data in the network layer is in the form of packets however in the transport layer we have data in the form of segments so if I have a packet here you can see this is this is my complete packet uh, let me change the color here if you if you can see here this is my this is my complete packet this is the first packet and this is the second packet here then I will I will make a chunk here I will chunk it and then chunk it then chunk it so every chunk is going to be the segment every chunk is going to be segment then this is segment this is segment this is segment and they, these segments are going to be sended over the internet or over to the channel to the receiver or to the receiver side you can see here okay so this data or this segments is going to be transmitted to the receiver side in the form of segments now also i had written down reassembly so all these segment segmented data on the receiver side is going to be reassembled so segmentation is done on the transmitter side and the reassembly is done on the receiver side now the real question arises that as I'm as I'm saying you that these are the S1, S2, S3 are the segmented data. As I as I'm throwing you as I'm throwing these uh, you know segmented data in the uh, on the channel, then there are so many problems inside the channel, noise, disruptions, and many other interference, delay. So then, how receiver can understand that this is the data S1, this is the data S2, and uh, these two data are concatenated, or this is the complete whole structure of a packet? How your receiver is going to understand? Because your data is going to become like this, hi, and then other other time it, it comes as uh, what, then other come other on the, on the on the other time it comes as up. There is no sequence of the data, so we have a functionality as 4.3 known known as sequencing. So whenever you 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 throw S1 or the S2 or S3 that segmented data, you also throwing some sequence number by which the receiver can understand that yeah the sequence number and the data is comes up and the second second data is comes up with the sequence number two sequence number three the data comes up then he can join up otherwise the scrambled data comes up at the receiver side he is ne never going to understand the complete message right this is the problem so we have sequence number now 4.4 you already know about connection oriented that whenever he wants to send some data on the basis of tcp then it needs to establish the connection first and then you can send the data so we have three three way handshake for that okay then we have error control access control and flow control which is you know precisely from the data link layer we had seen but there is a difference in the error control you, you can see in the data link layer you are having detection of the error whereas in the in the tc or in the transport layer we have error detection as well as error correction 
keep that in mind then other thing we have congestion control and end to end communication which are the 4.9 functions in the transport layer now let's understand the the fifth layer fifth layer is going to be the session layer now session layer actually it possesses two functionalities first one is dialog control and the second thing is synchronizations so you see dialog control what do you mean by dialog control is actually whenever you fill up some form or any other stuff the server or the service is going to allocate some session time whenever that session time is going to be expired you have to again restart your work so you are in the in the some dialog where there is some restriction on the time and you have to work on the on bit on, on the on that on that specified time okay that is the dialog control or you can precisely known known as session session time out okay then we have something called as synchronization now synchronization you see here synchronization what do you mean by synchronization let's say for an example a user on the sender side have 2000 page of book here and this this person is sending this 2000 pages of book to the receiver side here on the rx now there is a problem there is a reliability problem at the receiver side how reliability as this as he is sending 2000 page now this receiver never going to understand that the complete page 2000 page comes up at my side or not because he never going to count that one two three four he never going to count it right so there is a reliability problem so to solve that we have synchronizations and how synchronization working it says the synchronization says that you send 100 page you send 100 page and then and then put a flag you put a fl flag okay then then this receiver receiver side he is going to understand that yeah from the 2000 page my 100 page is been received to me now at the second time you send other 100 and then put a flag so receiver side will understand that yeah 200 page has been received from the 2000 page at the third time you send other 100 and put a flag at the third time receiver will understand that yeah 300 pages comes up from the 2000 pages and so on a receiver has a reliability here that yeah my 2000 complete set of pages is being received to me with the help of this flag mechanism we precisely call it as synchronization i hope you are getting it okay so next thing is we can understand the presentation layer which is the most simplest layer of all and i don't think i need to you know give you an explanation on presentation layer so the first functionality it says translation so translation it means you know whenever you you go for russian website you cannot read it right <laughs> that's the thing you translate it to the english language so that you can understand it in the same way translation presides here so if a data is in the binary form or uh, you want to convert it convert it into the decimal form translation comes up it also possesses with encoding also okay so the sec second functionality we have in encryption so all types of cryptographic thing all types of hashing thing comes and exist here so to between sender and receiver the data which is flowing uh, is going to be completely encrypted with the help of encryption algorithms then we have something called as uh, 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 compressions yeah we have something called as compression now you see your actual image image file your image file is going to be you know whenever you capture it with the help of dslr they are very huge very huge in size maybe 1 gb 2 gb now you cannot store this 1 gb to the internet you please keep that in mind if you will store it then your internet is going to be you know it's going to be very huge very huge so what exactly in the real time we do we compress it so that you know it gives you some limitations on this image so it can be a 250 now kb or some mb okay so 1 mb maybe so you compress it completely compressed we have different algorithm for compressions huffman and like and, and other algorithms so these are the three functionality that you know this presentation layer is going to be uh, going to be possessed and i hope these three functionalities are very easy to understand so the next and the last layer is going to be your seventh layer and we call it as application layer so on the application layer we have something called as a directory service we generally deal with all you know application protocols um, so in terms of application protocol we have something called as tftp or ftp these are the uh, these are the 
what do you call directory services okay file transfer protocol interval file transfer protocol and then secure file transfer protocol and like that the other other thing that this application layer possesses is mail servers and the protocol that it says pop3 or maybe smtp imap and stuff like that then we have we have remote login now when i say remote login you can directly call your telnet you can call your ssh and like that so these are the you know functionality that it possesses by the application layer keep that in mind if there is an option called as word called as paint called as another software or maybe excel or like that you please keep that in mind that these these are not the application layered stuff these are completely going to be wrong okay you you never you never tick on these options this is going to be wrong these are your actual you know services which possessed by application so it means the protocol that resides inside this applications you you need to you know you need to tick or you need to uh, uh, you know uh, uh, what do you call that choose those uh, you know the <laughs> services you don't choose paint, word paint excel and the software thing you generally call it as applications so it is going to be wrong in your mcq test or or any app, uh, or any uh, what do you multiple choice questions whenever it comes okay so you keep that in mind okay if you have any doubt you can come up with the uh, comment section you can write it down i can solve that uh, i can make another video if if you having any q and a uh, if you want any q and a session um, other than that um, thank you so much for listening to me if you have uh, if you need some other videos on this stuff i can create that and uh, thank you so much for listening to me okay and uh, um, if you haven't subscribed my channel again i please insist you to subscribe my channel like comment and share thank you so much